running all the way from democracy to despotism. One to the democracy end, another somewhere in the middle, and a third... Hey there, friend. Have you ever heard the story of the emperor wears no clothes? I'm sure you've probably heard the title if you haven't heard the story itself, but before I go further, I suppose I should give you a brief synopsis probably would have been smart to have some notes in front of me, but I'm going to go by what I remember. A couple of swindlers walk into town, in a kingdom, somewhere, sometime. And they ask for an audience with the king. And they sit down with the king and they say, We are weavers from a faraway kingdom, and we can create you the greatest gown, the greatest king's clothing you've ever seen in your life. There's only one catch, he said. Stupid people cannot see it, so they will claim that you're naked. Only intelligent people can see the clothing. So the king agreed to it. He said, that sounds fine. So they went along and went to weaving this cloak. Time passed, and people would enter, the, the king's assistant and the people would go into the chamber where they were sewing and weaving this great garment and they would see all these looms set up and these guys working fervently but nothing was being produced and so in their minds they thought I must be stupid but they dared not admit as much they dared not speak up and say I don't see anything being created because they knew that if they were seen to be stupid then they would lose their positions and they would be ridiculed so they pretended the garments looked beautiful. A month later, they came out and said, the garment is done. They had the king stand up on a little podium and they wrapped all these invisible clothes around him, put on his garments one arm at a time, one leg at a time, and said, you look fantastic. And the king looked down and saw his naked body and thought, I cannot admit that I cannot see these clothes, or I will be deemed a fool, and a king cannot be a fool. So he pretended that he saw the clothes, and he went down to town parading his new clothing, being pulled along on a wagon by horses, waving to the crowd, and all of the parents, all the adults, waved and cheered his new clothing. But all of a sudden, a child stepped forward and said, He's naked! And his mom tried to quiet him down, but it didn't work. And another kid stepped up and said, He is naked! And pretty soon all the children were laughing at the king. The king had to eventually admit that he had no clothing. Are the children the fools? I know there's more to this story, but that's pretty much the basic <laughs> the premise of it. Hope I covered it well enough. This idea that somebody who is in a position of power cannot be seen as a fool means that they will continue to abuse their power uh, they will continue to overlook any incongruencies or you know inconsistencies within their within their own leadership within the people around them and it's especially telling that the people around leadership will refuse to tell the leaders that they're making a mistake We've seen this time and again with a variety of different kingdoms and institutions and uh, we've seen it recently in the United States. The way that people will stand around and support a president or a politician, no matter what decisions they make, regardless of whether it's good or bad. You wouldn't dare tell the emperor that he's not wearing clothes. I feel like this same thing has come about with many people who claim to be on the side of good, people who you're not allowed to point the finger at, you're not allowed to say this person's in the wrong, because all of a sudden you become the bad guy. The more words we dump into something, it seems the dumber we appear. The more we try to explain ourselves and justify why we feel the way we do, the more complicated it becomes, the more convoluted it becomes. So a lot of people just shut up. 
and they refuse to admit that indeed the emperor has no clothing, even when it's plain as day obvious to every single person. We're living in strange times, but it's nothing new. We've always had these issues. The current situation that we have regarding leadership really pales in comparison to the corporatocracy that actually runs the world right now. This wasn't always the way. There were various kingdoms and various territories that were owned by a variety of countries. People were fighting and jostling for their positions over the last few hundred years. And things went pretty quiet on the home front over the last century as far as land territory changes and uh, taking of lands, even though there were plenty of coups within governments. The point that I wanted to make was that these coups were not for the benefit of a country. The things that our military has done to, let's say, other countries was never for the benefit of the American people nor leadership. It was nor for protecting anyone. But a majority of these land grabs were to either, quote, fight communism, to stop socialism, to eliminate the possibility of any other government starting a socialist type network where they can actually take care of their people because nobody wanted to be shown up. But the major issue here is the corporatocracy makes the decisions. The corporations in America make the choices about why we go to war, when we go to war, you know, how much can we make off of one war. During World War II, we entered late in the war, but the production ramped up American uh, profits heavily. And since then, we've relied on this wartime atmosphere, this, these sales of weapons. And uh, I know that this video took quite a turn from the Emperor, but this is where I'm leading here is to the fact that the Emperor really is the corporation. The Emperor has always been the corporation in the last at least 50 years. The corporation can do no wrong. The, the corporation decides what we want, what we should eat, what we should drink, how we should think. And on top of this, whenever somebody else tries to step up to the plate to make it fair for everyone or to give small business equal time and fairness and equality, it all falls apart because the corporation stands in the way of that, because they want business as usual. And in the past, no one was brave enough to stand up and show where the corporation was failing us. And when I say the corporation, I mean the corporate nature of America and the rest of the world now. Nobody wanted to step up and admit it because they would be pushed back down. Now, there's a change in the a sea change in the way that we talk to one another and the way that we deal with corruption and greed is we have the internet which can work both for and against us we can create a monster or an enemy out of someone who is on the people's side I mean just look at what they've done to some of the greatest philosophers they've slammed them to the ground you know it's if, if they don't, if we don't, if we can't come to an agreement on, you know, one way to do things, then everything has to be shut down, and people have to be shut down, and their opinions have to be shut down. But now that the people have purchasing power and voting power, and the power to gather online, and let's say stand up for what they believe, this can be a vast benefit or a liability for us as humans because we can call out these companies that are doing things that are horrible. But meanwhile, we might be missing the bigger picture or donating to the wrong cause or helping the wrong charity. You know, groups like uh, Seafood Safe Tuna, as I mentioned, a documentary I watched the other day about how the companies that, these nonprofits that supposedly determine whether these foods are safe and they're, you know, dolphin safe tuna, for example. This company is owned in part by one of the largest seafood producers in the world. There, nobody really puts this much time into the efforts of, of charity and helping others often unless there's some guise by which they're making profits underneath the surface. 
And this is frustrating, because maybe it means that we as a society wear no clothes. Maybe we're all ignorant as a group, as a whole. That we walk along pretending like we're evolving past our primal, you know, ignorance, but we find that that's just not the case at all. We're just as ignorant as ever, and perhaps more so, by defending capitalism in a world where there's an end in sight to what we can consume. And consumerism it has to end eventually. Now, a person may call me a Marxist or a socialist or any other number of terms which over the past several years have become uh, basically equivalent of Satan, if you will. And I've done a lot of thinking about this. I do not support capitalism because it becomes crony capitalism by default. You cannot allow the market to run itself when you have corporations in today's world that are so domineering that they can lobby Congress to change laws to benefit them and no one else. And this is exactly what's happening. Whether it's the milk or dairy industry, right? Whether it's the meat industry or the fishing industry. Did you know if you're an American and you're a vegetarian, a large portion of your tax dollars still go to subsidize dairy, eggs, meat, um, the fishing industry, even the grains. Even when U.S. producers are told to dump their soybeans because the market, let's put it this way, there's, there's a market for soybeans one year and there's too much of a surplus. Farmers have been told to dump their crops and let them rot in order to keep the market and the prices artificially high. And then they are paid to dump that crop by the government coming from your tax dollars. You're working and then you're paying money to someone else to pay a farmer to burn or destroy his own crop. This isn't just something that happens once in a while. This is something that happens all the time. You don't see it on the news. You don't hear about it on the media. And you rarely hear about it on even alternative media. And I'll tell you why. Because it's not very exciting. People would rather talk about George Soros and Illuminati and BLM and how horrible Antifa is and actually address these major issues that are going on with these corporatocracies, you know, that are <laughs> basically silencing anyone who says anything bad about their products. Companies like Monsanto and their Roundup Ready soybeans and everything else, which a lot of farmers are coming out and saying we're basically forced to use it, and now it's not even Roundup Ready anymore. The crops are actually starting to get a lot more weeds, and now these plants are becoming resistant, and weeds are becoming resistant to Roundup. This is something that's going to happen with our monoculture, the way that we're running the world. There's a small group of people out here that actually understand how fucked up what we have is and what's going on right now. Sure, we can't stop climate change. It's going to change. The planet will change. I'm not going to sit here and say if we all drive electric cars tomorrow, that's going to solve the problem. I know better. They still require batteries. Do I think windmills going to solve the problem with our electricity and power? Hell no. There's places without wind. Not only that, but the windmills require neodymium magnets to operate. Those neodymium magnets come out of China from one specific region where there are giant pools that are acres and acres of just toxic radioactive water that nobody can live around and the people who do, who are forced to, have to drink the water, which is loaded with arsenic and various radioactive compounds. And that's just for the windmills. I won't even get into the solar panels. And look, I'm a green energy guy. I'm a conservative person. I, want, I try to recycle. I try to do my thing. Recycling is dumped in the garbage now. Like 90% of what you throw in your recycling bin is dumped in the landfill. Because China, three years ago, stopped taking any of our garbage. The world is at a standstill. What happened the other day with the Suez Canal, costing a half a billion dollars in backups, was just a tip of the iceberg. We are so well connected right now. It is too good. Too good to the point where one virus, <laughs> as what happened recently, can totally shut down the supply chain for a lot of items. And I'm not here to be a fear monger or tell you that the world's going to end tomorrow. Humans will continue as long as we possibly can. What I'm saying is that if you have children and they're going to have children, we have to leave a world that's reasonable for them. Which means that we may not be able to control all the weather, the earthquakes, the solar flares, the fires, 
but we can control our own spending, what we choose to buy, and the purchasing power ultimately lies in the person, in the people, in all of us. So when are we going to decide to live properly? I'm kind of disgusted by a lot of things in society, and I try not to be. No. My brother and I just had a discussion earlier about uh, uh, streaming, li like live streaming from Twitch, and I was telling him how, he was saying how so many of the girls on there are just doing it for, you know, because they have their boobs hanging out, right? And we got into this conversation about <clears throat> content and substance versus exploit of sexuality or exploiting yourself. Um, and all of this falls into place in this modern day of confusion. As he mentioned, you know, it's one of the oldest professions, right? Uh, sex. Sex sells, and it always has. But uh, the point I was making is that we're moving in a different direction. That we're starting, I feel like we as a species are starting to look past this. The, ooh, a hot dude or a hot girl, or, ooh, I can make a million dollars. I thought at a point in my generation that we were going to move past this short-sighted bullshit that Hollywood fed us for so long. But today's generation is worse than ever. And I don't mean that as, oh, damn kids today. I feel sorry for today's generation. I've done a lot of analysis into why people are the way they are today, especially the kids. Look, Gen X here, at least we were told we had the opportunity for growth. We were told if we went to college it mattered. We were told that we might have jobs in the future. The kids of today don't have any of that. I say that over half of the kids, teenage and younger, over half of them want to be YouTubers or internet stars or influencers. And part of me just scoffs at that. <sighs> Idiots. But then no. Genius. Because that's really all they fucking have. Pardon the language. That's all they have in today's world to look forward to is maybe making some money off of a, a deal. When people talk about how jobs are increasing in this country, it's bullshit. I was shocked to find out that over a third of all jobs in America, especially the new jobs, they talk about how the economy is doing better and there's all these new jobs. I think it was 36% of jobs are gig jobs. The gig economy is not a job. It means you're getting no insurance. It means you're getting no benefits. It means you're getting no health care. You're getting absolutely no, uh, you know, paid leave, vacation time, any of that. On top of that, you're probably driving your own car for Uber Eats or something, and then you have to worry about your car breaking down. You don't get paid for mileage. You don't get paid for gas, and you don't get paid for your car falling apart. So many kids today are working in that economy, and who's making the money? The corporations with the applications. <laughs> corporations and applications. Yeah, there's something to be said about that. So, once again, you know, I guess I could do my little, like, uh, back and forth with about how, Carpo, why are you complaining about everything? But, um, I'm really not. I'm saying that the Emperor does wear no clothes, and that it's okay to say as much. That you're not a hater of society because you insult and demean corporatocracy or because you talk down on capitalism. If people want to call you a socialist, let them. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to do any damage to you. You know, I've heard so many bad things about Karl Marx over the last five years that I thought the guy was a monster. I'd never even really looked into him. I started reading some of his work and found out he's totally misunderstood, and I'm guaranteeing everyone who calls somebody else a Marxist has never read any Karl Marx. And I feel like that's the world we're living in right now. People don't give a shit about research, they don't give a shit about facts, they don't care about what other people think. All they care about is proving their own point. And it's difficult because I often get caught up in that, and people assume I'm trying to push my views on them or that I want to fight or argue when in fact I'm really just explaining my position or trying to get to the bottom of a situation that we all are trying to figure out. And let me just tell you this, you know, I'm not an intellectual. I'm a philosopher and philosophers are getting pushed out of society. I don't care for intellectuals. If you want to sit around a table in a suit and use big words, college words, go for it. You know, if that moves you. That's not my thing. I want to use simple, down-to-earth, human 
language, whatever language you may use, to get to the masses and to talk about these topics that need to be discussed. Without me meaning, it's weird how disgust and disgust sound. I never really thought about that. I'm going to have to do something with that. These issues can be discussed with people, all people. Nobody should be left out of these discussions. It doesn't matter how poor or how uneducated you are in society. You should always try to use, we should always try to use the most rudimentary basic language in order to convey our message so everyone can understand it. All of us. I'm not trying to be above or better than anyone else. It's just, we're just so separated, you know? But we're also, <clears throat> most of us, as much as we're fighting amongst ourselves and within ourselves, we're on the same page. We all want the same things. We want a happy life. We want contentment. We want acceptance and love. And uh, to just be able to do our own thing without being fucked over by some other agency for their own interests. And that's getting harder to do. Thanks for listening. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and all that shit. And uh, subscribe and hit like and I'll talk to y'all next time. Be well. So you're a you're a communist then? Nice. No man. I mean I'm just a human being. Like everybody else. You know what I think it is? I think you just hate money and you're jealous of successful people. That's what I think. No no no. I, I hate greed. I hate corruption and greed. I have no problem with money, it's just basically a representation of, uh, I don't know, prosperity, but it really translates into the items that we can buy. It's really about commerce, and when the price keeps going up on everything, it just continues to get worse for everyone else with inflation. Hate to break it to you, but uh, this is America, and if you don't like it, you can just get the fuck out, right? I was told that we make the country we want. If we see something going on that we don't agree with, we don't run away from it. We fight for it. And when I see the light at the end of the tunnel, it's hard not to stand up for the things that I think are important. That's socialist talk. Then let me ask you this. Do you think your life is better than your parents was? And if so, why? Because it should be. We were always told that this prosperity would be shared, America has done so well, that our country is the greatest country on the planet, yet we can't even take care of our weakest members. And it's not just a number issue. This goes this is obvious and transparent. You can see it with other countries. Um, we do not take care of the weakest in our society, and that's a problem, right? Hell no. <laughs> I lost my job, I lost my house in the 2008 crash, and it was just horrible. I've had a really rough time of it, and uh, yeah, no, of course not. Let me ask you this then. Do you think that we can improve as a society and do better if we just try harder? Hmm. No, nah, man, we're fucked. We're totally fucked. Look at that lush dog. What's she looking at out there? <laughs> Ducks. Ducks. These here are our good friends, Betty and Frank. They've been visiting us for at least the last five years or longer. And I'm going to guess it's the same mating pair. My dog is standing behind me at the window just dying to get out here and munch on them. 
Kerpus chain was 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 Kerp